Hey, Steve, how are you? Doing well, man. Narrowly avoided that one last night. Yep, episode four of the Broadway Block coming to you live April 2nd. It's a little bit cold today in New Jersey. Snowflakes flying, not what you expected for April. But the Rangers came out with a win. We're at 38 points, tied with the Flyers, looking up at the Bruins with 41 points. What's the next move? Do we win tomorrow against the Sabres, Steve? It's probably one of the most important games so far. Um, the Bruins, if you started at the end of the, the beginning of the season and said that the Bruins would be in the last playoff spot and that that would be the one that we're challenging for, I would have bet you a lot of money that that wouldn't be true. Um, but it looks pretty cemented that the Caps and the Isles are going to run away with it. And the Penguins have been on a little bit of a streak. So all of them close to the 50 point mark. And it looks like the Bruins spot is the one that we're going to have to have to hope for. If we're going to get any, it's going to be that one, right? Um, so pretty much the, the most boring game I've ever watched for, for 45 minutes of it. Um, and then when everyone pretty much was, you know, entering the zone, chipping it deep, three seconds left, you can almost look away and terrible absolutely deflating um was holding my breath in overtime and we got it done you don't exactly hate to give up the point to the sabers but that being said they're five or six games away from from our tails so points are precious um every game being divisional so i guess was, if you're gonna was, give up it was a point, pretty crushing at 3.6 six seconds or whatever it was to watch tage thompson just hit that one in we had the couple opportunities there with the empty net Kreider was at the mid ice he didn't knock it in Strom had some opportunities but we let them they were had about a minute and a half with the puck and who would have expected Tage Thompson of all people to knock one in but he did we went to overtime Zabanajan three on three play with Fox, who was out Fox Zabanajan Panarin. and Panarin Zabanajan knocked it in that um, tallied his six overtime goal with the Rangers. That's a fourth in the most in the franchise. So that was definitely good for Mika to come on that and get that win for us. Um, looking ahead, we have the Sabres again Saturday. We can't fall to the trap game. We need that win like me and Steve have told you guys. Um, big name came through for us was Blackwell. Blackwell had the tying goal in this game. Who would have expected that? Mr. 700K, third, fourth liner, getting it done for us. Yeah, so um, Blackwell plays on on that line, and I'm not quite sure if it was just a, a delayed uh, shift that he was taking. Um, he was with he gets, Panarin, right? Yep, so it was either he was bumped up. Kako was playing a great game, I thought, um, but Agreed. you need guys like that to step up. He misses the first opportunity, stays with it, circles back, and gets an uh, opportunity right in the slot. Um, Blackwell's been great for us. I think going back to the Mika goal, that's a goal he misses in the first 10 games of the season. Um, this is that a one T is a is a confident play. And who other than Panarin? You could watch on the replay that Tokarski was way off to the to the left side of the crease, um, probably suspecting Panarin to just try to snipe one in. Um, but when you give that much open space to Mika, you know, again, first 10 games of the season, that probably doesn't go in, but he's playing with some confidence and was able to bury that one. Another um, I really on that like game. the heel pull. We were, we were over Sorry, four on the power play on that go game, which is really hurting us. Tukarski definitely kept them in that game. He was, uh, he, great. Had a, he robbed Strom a couple times on the power play and we just really couldn't find the net there. Good movement. I think we were the last power play. We were a minute and a half in their zone, but we really couldn't connect. So that's another point going forward. We really got to at least convert one of these power plays, if not two, if we're going to be able to keep up with the big boys of our division and of the league in the playoffs, if we even get there. So. Well, I mentioned last time we actually lead uh, the league in power play opportunities. Uh, we're definitely pretty low on the list of, of cashing in on them. Um, Tokarski played great. He definitely bailed them out of a lot of situations. Um, I love the Heedle goal. You don't always see the 
gritty type goals from those guys, but those are the goals that you're going to need to get from your third and fourth line secondary scoring. Um, just keep keep grinding away, chipping it. Truba shoots it on net, and you get a little couple lucky bounces. There's bodies on the floor, Go to and Heedle's able to just roof it over everybody. So mm -hmm. That's what you want. So coming tomorrow night, does he – a couple plays, I saw Igor, Igor slow to get up. Does he do the start tomorrow against the Sabres, or you save him for Monday against the Pens? I think you can't afford to, to mess around at this point. Um, these games are going to be super important. Um, I would imagine they're going to be riding Igor pretty heavy to remain the rest of the season. It stinks a little bit because the Sabres are a team that maybe you're comfortable or more comfortable rather to put out your backup. Um, but I would we imagine need, we need this win. Yeah. Barring any back to backs, I would say that uh, Igor is going to be in there quite a bit. Okay. So looking forward, I, I actually found out some information that we talked last week about the Brendan Lemieux trade that we ended up getting a fourth from the Kings for him. We thought, Oh, the Rangers, Jeff Gorton doing what he does, making room slots and positions for people. But turns out that Brendan Lemieux's agent had requested a trade because he wanted a bigger role, which the Kings is definitely another team like us rebuilding where he may get a bigger role there for them. Well, his agent's his dad, right? So it's like, it was that just uh, them being who they are as people and, and kind of gallivanting and talking about For, that they're not forcing someone's hand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. I mean, the, the Kings are a spot right now where if someone is playing well, they can maybe take some, some better ice time. So he probably wasn't going to get the opportunities with here. I think it's just easy for us to project in that situation with the timing crafts comes over, does the pro code of uh, COVID protocol. Uh, so it just makes sense. I think on paper that you like, okay, we'll make some room, but that is an interesting development that he, I don't want to say, I mean, I can't speak for him obviously, but it doesn't seem like he was ever unhappy being out there, but to be such a limited ice time, it's understandable being how much we're riding some of our top guys and wish him the luck. I, I, you know this, but I, I'm a big fan of uh, Pepe. So I hope he, hope he gets an opportunity somewhere else. I, I definitely, I definitely think he will. So looking forward, we got the Bruins game on Monday. Um, not too much trade talks as of right now. I think everybody like we've been talking about has been waiting to see where the chips fall as we get closer to see if, you know, you're a buyer or seller at the deadline because, you know, with only those four teams and the way the divisions are, it's pretty close. So we, I think in the next week we should see some more chips fall. But until then, I think we got to, focus on the Sabres and then look forward to the pens. Well, we're in a weird spot cap wise, right? So it's like, you can't afford to really add uh, too much. Any addition would probably be by subtraction, making room for somebody, um, you know, looking forward to the off season, you got some contracts falling off, you got some buyouts falling off. So that might be when we make our moves. I think that this season right now, we're performing right about where we thought we would, where, I wouldn't be surprised if we missed the playoffs. I'd be rooting for us to make the playoffs, obviously, um, to give the young guys some experience. But I don't think you can afford really to add anybody until the offseason comes. You got Seattle this summer, which will complicate things. Um, maybe one of these videos will break down um, who should be protected. But if you look at the Rangers roster, a lot of them are on entry level contracts, which they'll follow the same rules as the Vegas Golden Knights expansion, where you're allowed uh, protection and players that are on their second year of a contract are going to be automatically protected. So if you look at the Rangers roster, a lot of these guys are going to be automatically protected. A guy like Lemieux, um, you could project maybe might have been selected by them, um, being that he was uh, the first selection of the second round in his draft class. So somebody clearly thought he had uh, some higher level offensive abilities, but I think we stand to lose uh, you know, a guy like Rooney or somebody like that. So maybe to just not complicate the protection list, you don't move anybody really to make, uh, to make a splash at the deadline. You ride it out, see what happens, get your chance at another lotto pick. Because after that, we're not going to have uh, the same lotto rules anymore. If you miss the playoffs this year, you're in the lotto, which is the last year that it's going to happen for the NHL. So either way, I think it's a positive for us. And then in the off season, we'll have a better idea where we stand, who we can move and, Who's out there?
Eichel, fingers crossed. You're all up there, but I don't want to lose a Hedo for an Eichel. To me, the Giannato. What, what would you give up if you if you were Gorton and you were presented the opportunity to 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 grab Jack Eichel? Well, you know you're going to have to give them some some player established. So it depends on what their needs are. If they say we need a winger, you're going to say I can give you this, this, or this. You say I need a center back, and you know that's our one of our positions that we're hurting the most on. A lot of our prospects are defensive prospects, and a lot of our prospects are wingers. So I could see us giving up a Zabeda Jad, but I don't see us giving up Hito. I could see us giving up a first round pick, but I don't see us giving up two first round picks. So I'm pretty much at a prospect, an established player, and a first round pick for Eichel. Nothing more, maybe, you know, a fourth rounder really to put the cherry on the top or something along those lines. But other than that, I don't want to mortgage the farm for it. Fair enough. I'd say that it probably lives and dies with how many uh, they want four. So four uh, first round type four. players. Yeah, I, I'd say it lives and dies with our ability or willingness to trade those those first rounders or, or two of them. Um, and a guy, you know, a guy that probably we want to see on the ice probably goes in that situation, like a Booch or a Heedle or a Kravstoff. Those names are probably probably the names we're looking at. Okay. Well, I think that wraps it up for today on the Broadway block. Thank you, Steve. We look forward. Let's go Rangers Saturday. Big win, man. We need it. Big win. Thank you.